The Fairlight Page in DaVinci Resolve is not just a collection of audio editing tools, it's actually a fully functional digital audio workstation, or DAW for short. And there are a lot of tools in Fairlight that will help you get great sounding videos. Here's 10 that you should definitely be using. Let's start off with meters. Meters give you a bird's eye view of the levels of every single one of your audio tracks, including your master track and your buses. More on buses in a bit. There's also a playback monitor that will let you see where in the video your playhead is, and as an added bonus, that playback monitor can be popped out and moved wherever you want, which is super helpful if you're using dual monitors. But probably the most helpful part of the meters is the loudness meter. We'll go over exactly why that is a little bit later in this video. Turning on the meters is pretty simple, just head up to the top of the page, click meters, and your meters will show up at the top of the screen. If you want to get rid of them, just click meters again. Okay, let's move on to audio buses. Basically, buses are groups of audio tracks that are controlled by a single audio track, which can help you save time and get a more accurate mix. Sound confusing? Don't worry, I'll show you exactly what I mean. To create a bus, go up to Fairlight in the top menu, click on Bus Format, and click on Sub. From there, you can give your bus a name and choose whether you want it to be in mono or stereo. Then click OK, and you're done. Kind of. Now we need to assign tracks to a bus. Go back up to Fairlight in the top menu, click on Bus Assign, and you'll see that at the top of the window you have your main track and the bus that you created earlier. Let's make sure our main track is selected, and then click on the tracks that you want to add to your bus. That will remove the tracks from the main. Next, click on your bus, and then click on the tracks you want to have controlled by your bus. Then just click save and you're done. For real this time. Now, whatever you do to the bus track will affect the tracks that you added to it. I typically use buses for dialogue tracks, and I tend to have two dialogue tracks per person in a video, so adding both of those tracks to a bus will allow me to edit both those tracks at the same time, which is a huge time saver and will help you make sure that you don't do anything to one dialogue track without doing it to the other. Trust me, I've done that. Not good. Very, very not good. Okay, the next few features can be found on every track in the mixer. First is the track level EQ. I like the track level EQ over the clip level EQ for two reasons. First, it has more bands on it, meaning I can really dial in the sound that I want. And second, because this EQ will affect all of the clips on the track, so I don't need to go clip by clip when I'm doing EQ. Side note, that's only a good thing if all of your clips are from the same source, so, you know, organize your timeline accordingly. Getting to your EQ is easy. Just head over to the track mixer and double click on the EQ. If you don't see the EQ, just click on the three dots at the top right of the mixer and click on EQ. Actually, that goes for the next two track level tools I'm about to mention. Moving on, let's look at dynamics. Dynamics are the noise gate, expander, compressor, and limiter that will really help make your audio pop. Out of the four tools available on here, I use compressor the most, followed by the limiter, but I rarely use the noise gate or the expander. By the way, I'm going to be doing a video on how to use a compressor the right way really soon, so make sure you're subscribed so you don't miss it. Okay, the last of the track level tools that I wanna point out is the panning. I I love this tool because I not only can pan from left to right, I can pan from front to back as well, which really helps if I'm mixing for surround sound. I was actually thinking of going a little more in depth on this tool in another video. Do me a favor and leave a comment down below. Is that something you might want to see? Moving on, we've got the Fairlight Sound Library, which can be found by clicking on Sound Library in the top left of the screen. The Sound Library is cool for a couple of reasons. First, you can actually download a whole bunch of Foley from Blackmagic Design for free, and it will automatically install it for you in the library. Then all you have to do is search for the sound you want, preview it, and put it in your video. The second reason is because you can actually add your own sound effects to the library. So let's say you downloaded, I don't know, the Singularity Sound Effects Pack from Film Crux. Link in the description. It's awesome. I just did a review on it also linked in the description. You can actually add those sound effects to the sound library in the Fairlight page. It's like a one-stop shop for all your sound effects in Foley. How cool is that? All right, these next two tools can be found in your timeline view options, which are located just above your timeline. The first is fixed playhead. Turning this on will lock your playhead in the middle of your screen, and when you play back your video, the timeline will scroll instead. This tool is really helpful if you want to keep track of what part of the video you're listening to. The only downside is that turning on fixed playhead 
will take away your ability to just click somewhere on the timeline in order to move the playhead. Personally, I usually turn this off while I'm still assembling my audio, and then I turn it on when I'm listening back to make sure everything sounds okay. The next tool in the timeline view options is video clips, which will allow you to toggle your video clips on and off in the timeline. Turning these on will give you a more of a clear picture of what part of the video you're editing, but it will sacrifice a little bit of real estate on your timeline, and it might make it look a bit cluttered. Okay, this next tool is technically located in your project settings, but it has to do with audio, so I'm counting it. Let's talk about target loudness level. Fun fact, loudness isn't measured in decibels, it's measured in LUFs, or loudness unit full scale, and every platform has a different standard for how loud your video should be. For example, YouTube wants your video to be no louder than minus 14 LUFs. If you upload a video that's louder than that, YouTube will actually normalize your audio so that it's not too loud. That's why sometimes your audio sounds funny after you upload it. To avoid that, just go into your project settings, and then down in the Fairlight menu, change your target loudness level to minus 14 LUFs. Then over in the Fairlight page, you can use your loudness meter, remember that from earlier? To monitor your loudness and make sure that your video is loud enough, but not too loud for YouTube. I'll be doing a much more detailed video about normalizing for YouTube in DaVinci Resolve in a later video. Again, make sure you're subscribed so you don't miss it. Okay, the last tool I wanna show you is the Fairlight Presets Library. Yes, you can in fact create and save audio presets in DaVinci Resolve, and I've already made a video about it. Feel free to check that out by clicking right here and for more tools, tips, and tricks that will make you a better video editor, make sure to subscribe to the channel and hit that bell so you don't miss anything. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.